Hello, I'm Lee from Data Harvest. Today I'm going to take you through a titration experiment using our EasySense 2 software and our wireless Bluetooth pH sensor. So today the apparatus I've been using is your standard burette. Again, I prefer one at the top, 50 at the bottom, so the students can always see where they are as they're going down. Uh, standard retort stand, two clamps, two bosses. Always recommend you put the pH sensor in a uh, boss. It will hold it securely. Again, we're using a magnetic stirrer today. You don't have to use a magnetic stirrer. The student that's actually turning the tap on the burette can just use a glass rod and actually mix that round as well if you don't have, happen to have a magnetic stirrer to hand. To start off with, we now want to connect the software to the sensor. So you hold the button down for two seconds. The light has now come on and it's now flashing. We now go and open the EasySense 2 software up. Now the really good thing with the EasySense 2 software, I'm going to ask it to now search for Bluetooth devices, but it will only pick up data harvest Bluetooth devices. So I'm now going to go and click on device on the top left hand side. It now picks up pH. Now with, if you've got multiple pH sensors in the lab, which obviously you may do, on the front here you've got the light flashing so one you know it's on, but also there's a unique ID number to each of the pH electrode uh, sensors. So I can now go and click the one finishing 714, which is what it says on the front just there. So I now connect, <clears throat> takes a couple of seconds, it will connect to it. So quite often, obviously, you've got older pH electrodes in the uh, science labs. If you do, you can also calibrate the ones you've got. When you first buy them from Data Harvard, they are calibrated as long as you store them half nicely they're absolutely fine but obviously over time they will start to drift so you may need to actually calibrate them to calibrate them you could then just click on calibrate you can have the three or two point calibration default here is four seven and ten but again you can put whichever ones in you want there as well we don't need to calibrate <clears throat> close that down that's now all connected so what we're going to do now is set the easy sense to software up to do uh, run the titration experiment so we go to setup. It defaults to continuous, which is just a time graph, but we can now change this to snapshot because we want to take a reading when I choose to take the reading so I can be more controlled when I'm also turning the tap. I do want it to prompt me because I'm going to add volume at the same time so we can plot one against the other or whatever you choose to do, but it gives you more options. So the series name is going to be volume because that's the extra one I'm adding. And it's CM cube, CM3, whoops, there we go, CM3. So we're all set up there. Now I'm also going to set, change the layout of the graph. You could just keep one graph, but I want to have two graphs on here. So what I'm going to do, <coughs> line graph on that one just there is absolutely fine. But once you click on the sub graphs in the top left hand corner, you have six different ways to actually set the graph up. This time I just want it as a table. So you can have that there as well. So I now go and click the start button going to take a sample to start off with so I now click take sample on here is zero so I just add zero and save sample now my burette is going from one at the top down to 50 at the bottom I prefer using it this way around especially with the students they're going to let one mil through at a time because you do one two three four so you change it up as you go through after taking each reading if you're around the other way sometimes they forget where they are so it's nicer to do it this way around so I'm now going to let one mil through on here A little bit more, there we go. Let that mix. So we have magnetic stirrer here. You can also use a, a glass rod and mix it that way as well if you want. So we just let that settle and I shall now take another reading. And we're now, that's going to change to one. And we save that sample. And I'm now just going to repeat this 50 times. Well, 49 more times. So go to here, let it mix for a moment, take a reading, and now that's going to be two. And remember, if you forget where you were, you can always see the number up there so the students can type that in very easily as well. So we now take another reading on here. So we're now up to three. Let another mill through. Take a sample, and this time we're now on four. Let another one mill through. Let it, there you go, just let it mix again, and we're now on five. <clears throat> Let 
<clears throat> mixes quite quick the magnetic stirrer, so that is now six. Let it mix again, so we just go into seven. Take a sample on eight. Nine. We're now up to 10 already. That was 11, wasn't it? Yep, so we're now up to 11. Now up to 12. Thirteen. Fourteen. Fifteen. Now you'd normally have two students doing this, one turn in the tap, what was that one, fifth? That was sixteen, so one turn in the tap and one uh, on the your phone, laptop, device, whatever you may be using. So up to 18 already. Oh, there we go, a bit fast that time. And that was 18. Down to 20. Twenty-one. Whoops, just moved it. There you go. There you go. Move beaker moved, put that back, so we're back up to twenty-two. Twenty four, twenty five, oh, go up to twenty six. So we'll just take that sample as well. So we're now up to twenty six. So let another mill through. There you go, turn that up a little bit, there you go. So that's now at 27. Twenty-eight. Twenty-nine. Okay, I'm going, you can see already now that I'm pretty much there, but I'll carry it through just so you can see exactly how much. And we're now down to 30, or up to 30, whichever way you look at it. So we go down again. We're now onto 31. You can see the graph there. It's not too bad at all. Thirty-seven, thirty-eight, thirty-nine. I'll make it as stir has moved. There you go. So we're now up to thirty-nine. Thirty-eight. 
up to 40. See it's bottoming out now nicely, so you can see that. I tend to carry on to the end, just so you can see it completely bottom out. Seven, forty-eight, forty-nine. 48, 49, one more to go, there you go. So we now go to 50. So it's as simple as that to actually do the experiment. You can now play around with the graph and show what you want to show. Now the really good thing, we're going to click the stop button on here now, so we can change this to only show uh, pH on there. And on the bottom, we can show volume. So we can show pH against volume when you want to show it that way. It's as easy as that. You can now save your software, save it as a CSV or save it as an easy tense 2 file, whatever you wish to do with it. You can also go into the tool section here, have values, and you can see how all of that works on there as well. If you want to see more on our Secondary Academy, please visit the Data Harvest website on data-harvest.co.uk. Thank you.